threat. If whites are involved in their genetic survival and they are threatened by black male masculinity, then it will occur, I have to reduce his masculinity. Yeah, we just recently had the president at Morehouse have to say the male students cannot wear high heel shoes and dresses and carry purses. So something is happening again within the total context of a system of racism and white supremacy. Neely Fuller, who wrote the uh, textbook for victims of racism a number of years ago, in, 19, in the late mid-70s, he used to say in the system, because he was the first person to talk about racism as a system, and he said that as the system of racism and white supremacy moves on, the system is going to have black men wearing dresses. Now, to hear that in the 70s, people said, oh, this is way out. And here we are. You see, there's some black pediatricians who are saying we are developing epidemic levels of the effeminization of young black males. Well, I say the pants hanging it, sagging down, is just a subconscious invitation for homosexuality. You see, it's revealing the buttocks. See, so the pants are getting lower and lower and lower. The next step is to step out of the pants altogether. And so you step out of the pants, you're going to put on a dress. The effeminization is an essential ingredient of white genetic survival. And the only thing that can prevent it is black people becoming conscious or becoming determined that this is not going to happen to them because if the black men are destroyed, then the black people are gone and we have the state of genocide. They all No sufra, no sufra por amor, por traición, por dinero, por qué criticaron. No sufra por mujer, por engaño, por cuerno, por qué te votaron. No sufra por venganza, por celo, por odio, por qué te robaron. No sufra por dolor, por envidia, por muerte, por qué te enfermaron. No sufra. The black boy done got weak. You, yeah, yeah, the black boy done got weak. Uh, you got white boys kicking black boys in the ass. Uh, you got white boys making black boys put on black dresses. So, man, you know, it's just a, the, the further demonstration of the assassination of the black man character in this country, homie. And they just showing the rest of the world like I'm showing the rest of the world. This black boy getting weaker and weaker by the day. That's all they're doing, homie. The black boy getting weaker and weaker by the day. We get to do whatever we want to do, and look what he'll do. He'll do anything for anything. Hmm. He don't just do anything for money. He do anything for likes. He do anything for attention. He do anything for respect. He do anything for pussy. He do anything for a pair of Michael Jordan tennis shoes. The black boy done got so well, he just do anything for anything. He ain't got no dignity, no integrity. Nothing about himself no more. Wake up and see my beautiful black people suffer victimized by the oppressive harsh realities of the hood. I guess even though we were free, we were still slaves in the mind. Nothing. When you look at hip hop award shows now, you got more dudes with dresses than women now. That's a fact. That's propaganda. So now you have black men being told to be more feminine. So naturally, that's going to make the women more masculine because mm -hmm. who's going to protect me? That's Not a this fact. nigga in a dress. Right. So we're being.
and victim because you responded in a negative way. That's not what my post is talking about. I'm talking about the women who demasculate men and then turn around and you tell them, well, you need to be in touch with your feelings. Why you don't talk to me? Why do you don't express to me? Why are you talking to your homeboys? Why are you talk to your mama? Why you talk to your sister? Why you talk to your other female friends? Like, why are you talking to all these people? You don't talk to me. I'm your partner. Those are the people I'm talking about. When you are sitting here, you are wanting your man to speak to you. Now, now let's be honest. Men do not respond like women respond. Men do not open up just so freely like women open up. So when you have a man who is talking to you, whether that's a friend or and definitely a spouse or, you know, a boyfriend or whatever, you got to be so careful to not demasculate him in the moment of him being vulnerable. That's all my post was talking about. We're not talking about the men embarrassing you and then you you acting out of anger. That's That's not what the post is talking about. We're talking about strictly not allowing a man to be in a space to express himself. And then when he expresses himself, then you calling him, and I'm, I'm going to go on and say this. I know some people don't like cursing, but baby, I curse. Cursing makes me happy sometimes. My friend told me work on it, and I'm going to work on it, but I like to curse. But you cannot demasculate a man and tell him, oh, why don't you open up to me? Why don't you talk to me? You talk to your female friends. You talk to your mama. You talk to all these people but me, but I'm your partner. I'm supposed to be your best friend, but you're not. Because you're not creating safe spaces. He opened up to you. You turn around. Maybe not in that same day. But you use it against him the next time y'all in the argument. You turn around. You calling him a bitch. You calling him gay. You calling him every sensitive. Oh, you acting like a female. We do all of these verbal abusive comments to our men to demasculate them. And then we turn around in the same breath. And we act like the victim. We act like, well, I don't know why he don't talk to me. Yes, you do. And if I was him, I wouldn't talk to you either. I do my female friends like that. Female counterparts. Right, that P word, yep. I do them like that. If I share a vulnerable moment with you and you use that against me in my weakness, baby, you ain't got to worry about me saying nothing else to you. I will keep it to myself and go find somebody else, trust and believe. So if I do that as a woman, imagine what the men do. Men don't open up like us. They don't express like the, like us. They're not as vulnerable like us. So when you find these men that are opening up, do not demasculate him. Don't let society demasculate the black male. Or you'll be walking around looking like this. So horrible and disrespectful. Oh my lord. No. Move, bend, say, don't pray, don't pray. And Andrew, Dave Goggins, guys like that, they're the ones who are really pushing men to be accountable as men. The world right now is trying to like soften us. Back in the day, kings and whatnot want to stop an uproar or uprising that kill all the fighting age males. First thing the Romans did when they conquered the Greeks is kill all the warriors, all the fighting age males. Being Make men, you feel emasculated. You leave the soy boys and the bitches and then you can conquer it. Done.
say guys went from fight to power to what does Kim have on today? And what I call it is the purification of males. I'm not talking about gay men, gay men, yeah, you're gay. I'm not talking about women. I'm just talking about men not standing up, having some balls, and being about something. It's going on right now. Average level of male hormone has dropped over 1%. Yes, this is true. For one, processed foods. Number two, pornography. Three, microplastics. Number four, lack of quality sleep. Number five, people talking about living sedentary lifestyles too often, okay? You're not active enough. Get out, walk more, get more sunshine, vitamin D. Feel better more often, okay? Get more active. People just don't do that enough, not anymore. And uh, we live in a comfortable society where nobody wants to exercise or eat healthy or eat any whole foods or get eight hours of sleep because for some reason it's Flex whenever you only have four hours of sleep and you had McDonald's the night before and you never work out, but you still like, I don't even know, bro. I just, I don't even know, bro. I don't know. You heard me? Everybody wants to play with the slime. But it's all good. You know I'm a big troll. As long as I ain't no big troll. You can talk about my nails all you want. I know. Somebody who wish they could paint their nails right. I know somebody who wish they could paint their nails right now. So, mama, how do you think I should go about this? Because you hurt my feelings. I ain't never did none of y'all, man. I'm talking about none of y'all. For real. Oh no. Got too many people watching me. Bye. How many people? Um, I don't know. My Cause these niggas are too comfortable with shit I'm uncomfortable with. You hear how they the rap songs they got? The young nigga said he jumped out the car with two dicks on him. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got two dicks on me. Whoa. We well, get them dicks off that young man. Yeah. The other nigga said he had the dick with the nuts on it. I just turned that shit off. You think this this shit part of the Me Too movement and shit? Like, <laughs> like, how you ask a nigga to bar it though? Like, oh, yeah, me I, the dick. yeah, I got some beef, bro. I gotta come pick the dick up. <laughs> but you gotta let me hold that dick today. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, nigga. Come pick it up, Playboy. Put the nuts on that motherfucker too, man. <laughs> I think you and me need to have a conversation about this. I've been seeing this image claiming that BTS star Kim Namjoon has been labeled the most handsome man on earth over Henry Cavill. And needless to say, I am shocked and appalled. No, no, not shocked and appalled that this has already been exposed as fake, but instead at the racism that this fake article has done stirred up. And I found that image on one of those superhero MCU DC fanboy pages. I know, it's a shocker. Just a few of the hundreds of comments calling this man a woman. And again... Look, it's one thing not to find somebody attractive, but it's a whole different ballpark when you start being racist and misogynistic and homophobic. My favorite part here, the irony, is that they're trying to demasculinize this man over who did or didn't get voted for in a hot boy contest. Now, I may not be a BTS stan, but I will say this is the exact reason that I don't get involved with the superhero fanboy club. Simply put, I just don't align with racist pieces of sh Much love. U.S. Navy hires active duty drag queen to be face of recruitment drive. We got to start looking at these things from a strategic standpoint. This is not about drag queens. This is not about trans people. This is not about anything other than they're trying to intentionally slow the recruitment of the military and then weaken the, the amount of candidates, the, the quality of candidates in the military to weaken our only defense that we have to defend us our country, our land, our people, our economy, our families, they're trying to intentionally weaken by slowing down applications and recruitment while also making it legitimately weaker by bringing in people who are not testosterone filled men who can handle dirty fucking jobs. It's people who think the only thing in the world that matters is their fucking TikTok and then what rights they have to be themselves when the job is not to be yourself, the job is to defend our fucking country. So like, I don't want to hear about oppression in the service. I don't give a shit, bro. You're signing up to fucking defend our country. 
and do missions for our country. That is a job. And this flows over into every fucking career field. I don't... This... Your fucking ability to be yourself makes me... I do not give two fucks, bro. Can you do the job or can you not do the fucking job? And that's all we should be concerned about with our military. And right now, we're not. And anybody who knows fucking anything knows that this move slows recruitment. This move keeps able-bodied men out of the military. You heard Rob O'Neill say it. Fuck it, I'm done. What do you think all the other good men are saying right now? Fuck that. That's dangerous, bro. And it's consistent with what I've been telling you over and over and over and over and over again, which is the people in charge of our country are bought and paid for by foreign countries and are making moves strategically to weaken our country to position us to be conquered. Look, man, the black man is under attack. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Look, we've been under attack for a long time. The black man have. We the most killed when we go out, out our door mm. by the white man. Mm. We the most killed when we go to our, out our door by the, the black, black man. man. Preach. We get the less jobs. We get the least paying jobs. We also are the most hated by our own women. I ain't oh. never in my life heard a white woman say, boy, these white boys ain't shit. Right. I've never in my life seen online a white woman say, boy, Can't these work. white boys not publicly, not publicly. That being said, and let me say this too, black, black women under attack too, but not as much as black men. Mm -hmm. Also, we the most locked up. Mm. We the most damn near. Our numbers when it comes to homosexuality are growing far faster than anybody else, which that's fine. Live your truth. Mm -hmm. I'm just speaking on this right. subject. They try to demasculate us mm -hmm. the most. The only one thing that these white people are scared of more than anything, whether y'all black women want to believe it, is a strong black man in the house. Mm -hmm. It's a reason why some people or some, it, it's a reason why a woman can go get a Section 8 house or a house on Grapple and she can't have a man there in certain states, should I mean. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? That's the scariest thing out here to these white folks, a strong black man. It's so funny that the same year that they made Crack cocaine, a schedule three drug, where the, where the 94 crack bill came into play. We the most, where these bills gave me, black men basketball numbers mm -hmm. with the same year that they, that they started issuing Ritalin and made that a schedule three drug. So the way the, so the way the system works is, hey, put their kid on, on Ritalin, which is crack cocaine, right. and put they fucking, put they, and lock their dad up for selling crack cocaine. Take the dad out the house and their kid ain't gonna be. In the black community. And don't forget, I ain't mean to cut y'all, we the most stereotype too. Man, we the most stereotype. Look here, man, y'all sit up here, I see more and more black women talking about black men. All these motherfucking men cheat. Facts. Guess what? They White women just care about they men so much that they don't even call it cheating. They made another name for it. They call it affairs. No, <laughs> no not even that. When a cheater just, oh, he a cheating ass. Right. When a, no. black, when a white man cheat, oh, he had an affair. You know, Bobby, he's we look, 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 look. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. White men protect they men. They white women protect they men. They do. Now you said it right the first time too. White men protect yeah, white they men. Protect, nah, you they, said it right the first time. They protect their kind. Yes. Guess Thank what? you. And that, that, that's, that's we we we. And, and let me say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me yeah. make sure we and let me say they, they programmed us to be against each other. Correct. I was just about to say. They programmed us. It ain't black women's fault. I'm going to say that off time. It ain't right. black women's fault. They programmed us to be against each other, whether it's through TV. Look here, bro. The TV shows in the 90s was a man with his woman taking care of the house. There wasn't no cheating going on. They would not put a TV show on now unless it's a black nigga cheating, a black woman cheating, or a loud black woman. Real shit. Real shit. Bro, you you, you want to know why? You want to know why? Because they seen that that was keeping the black household together. Mm -hmm. We seen only strong figures, whether it was Bill Cosby, uh, even like Sanford and Sam when they worked on fucking cars. I think they worked on cars on mm -hmm. that. Good times, shit like yep. that. You know what I'm saying? Like, now a TV show is yeah. only the image of mm -hmm. a, a black man. TV and TV and movies too being fucked up. So guess what? They've been programming that. Today we're going to talk about the demasculation of the black man.
demaculize or demasculization is to remove the masculine character or qualities of a person, a thing, it don't matter. But why is it so funny to see a man in a fucking dress? Because they know what they did to us as a people. Strong guys that was living with the animals, harnessing the power of the earth, eating from the earth, all is one. We was never separated. Separation of the masculine energy from the feminine energy created a bunch of Big Mama, Shanae, Jamie Foxx, Marlon and Mar Martin Wayne's. Is it funny that all the black men that's being idolized are in dresses? Showing women characteristics? No. It's the agenda. Y'all get mad that the men that y'all dating are too feminine because it's the agenda that's being pushed. Men in dresses want strong masculine men that stick together for a brotherhood that's what they was breaking down they want to build feminine men and masculine women to throw off the balance of nature what y'all think the yin and yang is for light need dark dark need light it's a balance coexistence light sharing karma for part two if you want to take over a planet Okay, if you want to completely take over a planet, the first thing that you have to do is you have to take out the alpha males or the, strength, the strong males from the planet. Because the strong alpha males protect the divine feminine. Through television and films, how they are feminizing men more and more and more, you'll see women dressed up, I mean, men dressed up in female clothes. Well, the, the cane is a phallus or male energy. The two circles on either side are to control the male energy this is not to empower the female in any way this is this is this is a trick to to make it look like that it's empowering the female when in fact it is um taking away this taking away the protection from the female the feminism movement that happened in the 60s was to um destroy the family unit from the inside out a few episodes ago somebody said right one of the one of our guests said I want a man who is in tune with his feminine energy. Let's stop. Let's get that out the out the window, y'all. There's no such thing as a man being in his feminine energy. And if he is in feminine energy, he's a feminine man. And more than likely, you will lose respect, admiration, attraction, love for this man. Because biologically, you are hardwired to want a masculine man who you who can ensure your protection. Men are not meant to be dominant. Men are meant to be submissive. Boy, stop it. Saying men should be dangerous. By dangerous, that implies I should be ready to threaten someone, to hurt somebody. No, you should be capable of it. But that doesn't mean you should use it. There's nothing to you otherwise. Like if you're not a formidable force, there's, not, there's no morality in your self-control. If you're incapable of violence, not being violent isn't a virtue. People who teach martial arts know this full well, right? If you learn a martial art, you learn to be dangerous, but simultaneously you learn to control it. Both of those come together. And the combination of that capacity for danger and the capacity for control is what brings about the virtue. Otherwise, you confuse weakness with, with moral virtue. I'm harmless, therefore I'm good. It's like, no, that isn't how it works. That isn't how it works at all. If you're harmless, you're just weak. And if you're weak, you're not going to be good. You can't be, because it takes strength to be good. It's very difficult to be. There is atrazine throughout our water supply. If you, in a lab, put atrazine in, in a, a tank full of frogs, it will feminize uh, every frog in there. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. And 10% of the male frogs will turn into fully viable females able to produce viable eggs. If it's doing that to frogs, there's a lot of other evidence that it's doing it to human beings as well. Ow! What the hell are you doing, Cartman? I'm kidding you, but unfortunately I could only afford a wiffle bat, so it's going to take a while.
Cry then, don't fight it, cow, it will only take longer. Just slip into sweet unconsciousness. How many women want a amazing masculine man? But how many of you are demasculizing them every day and every way with a list of to-dos, ought-tos, and shoulds? Stop shitting on men with oughts, shoulds, to-dos. Allow them to step into their passion. Stop neutering them and let them rise back up.